Hello everyone and welcome to episode 9 of Get Lost with Lost. Uh, we've got quite a few things to get on with today. Um, last episode I misled you by saying that we would have infinite oxygen because I failed to take into account the day and night cycle on space stations. So at night time when all of the trees get cut down obviously they don't regrow. So this oxygen bubble diminishes quite rapidly. Um, I have tried to solve the issue. If we go outside and have a look but typically there's trees in the way. I'll better not jump off. Where's a gap? We'll fit. Go on, get up there. No, ah, oh, there we go. As you can see here, there's an awful lot of oxygen collectors up here. Now I thought, or well, my reasoning was, that the more oxygen collectors, the more buffers there would be, because they gather plenty of oxygen during the day, but uh, the buffers on them aren't actually all that impressive. So, as soon as uh, all of the leaves have disappeared, the bubble shrinks quite rapidly and, uh, well, they're generally a waste of time. So the whole infinite oxygen thing at the moment is relatively impossible until uh, it update, uh, well, until Galacticraft updates and we get a properly working sealer. But, because um, the oxygen is so easy to collect, it's, it's really quite simple just filling up new tanks. How are my tanks doing? They could do it being topped up, I suppose. Swap them round. Yeah, they do. These they fill up so fast with all of those oxygen collectors on there that it's really not an issue. And uh, the tanks last long through. Would last long through a night. I think they last a couple of days, to be honest. So I'm really not too fussed. I'll just have to live with it until um, it gets updated. Right now, I said in the last episode that I would get on with some. Um, modular power suits and that is exactly what I'm going to do. Okay now with modular power suits there are two main blocks we'll be using the first one being the power armor tinker table which in my opinion is one of the most beautiful blocks included in the mod pack I'm sure most of you will agree we'll come back to that in a moment the other is the energetic infuser which is thermal a thermal expansions answer to charging the power suits now this runs on minecraft jewels I think it's got a max input of 500 MJ per tick, which my machinery doesn't put out, but if you've got a daisy chain of redstone energy cells or whatnot, you have to hook it up so that it can get the full 500 if you want the fastest speed. Now with this you just drop the item on this side, it will get sucked automatically onto this side and it will start filling up using this buffer here. The buffer will go down really fast to start with, but then it will sort of level itself out, which is at the speed that it's going to be filling it up at. So don't worry, just because it isn't refilling back up, um, your, your power armor is still charging nicely. And um, we'll come back to that one again in a moment too. Now, as I said a couple of episodes ago, I did spend some time and I built all of the things we would need to make our power armor. Well, our power armor is made, but on its own it doesn't do very much of anything. But we'll get all of this stuff now. Um, another thing to be aware of is that I'm no expert with modular power armor. This is just the stuff that I looked on the uh, in the machine and I saw what um, I wanted to use myself. Now hopefully I won't catch fire because uh, if you overcharge or uh, overpower your armor too much then it becomes um, uh, it gets a heat danger. Uh, I know some things cause it to heat up a lot faster and you can burn to death which thoroughly sucks but it's a good mechanic to try and balance them out because these things can be pretty overpowered. Now the first thing I'm going to put in all of them is uh, energy storage. You've got three options, a basic battery which wants you to install one LV capacitor. Now you just have to have these things in your inventory and then you can install them. It doesn't take very long and then you, um, you well, your, suit, your tool or your piece of iron will be ready to go. Now I've made uh, HV capacitors for each one, so we'll be installing these in everything. Now I'll just go through and install these on every item first quickly. Um, when it comes to this, I'm not entirely sure what the IC2 tier is, um, or if, if it is uh, Industrial Craft 2 like it looks like, it's uh, obviously redundant in this mod pack. I may be completely wrong though, I probably should have checked up on that beforehand, but I completely forgot. Now battery size, if you adjust the battery size, if you look in the top right here, there's a weight as you can see. Now if we adjust this you'll see the weight goes up. So if we put this all the way to the top it will hold, the, that's the maximum it will hold which is 750 kilojoules. 
Now I'm not sure how that converts into Minecraft jewels, but it does make the power tool weigh 10 kilos, which is pretty damned heavy. So we're going to sort of aim for around 5, I think. Yeah, we'll go for around 5. I think we'll go for around 5 on everything. And if we find we uh, don't have enough power at any point, then we'll uh, come back through and change it. So we'll leave that like that for now. I'll go through and do the rest of these with the batteries, and then I'll come back to you. One moment. Okay, so all of the batteries have been installed and they've all been set for approximately um, 5 kilos in weight. So we should be nice and relatively balanced in my opinion. Now the next thing we'll be wanting, well, on the armour anyway, is armour. Now the iron plating is obviously very heavy. Um, the diamond plating is less heavy, obviously. And the energy shields, um, they're not weightless, but they weigh considerably less than anything else. But they do use a lot more energy. Um, which isn't a problem if you've got good energy production, which we do because we've got our um, biofuel power. So we'll be installing energy shields on all of the armour. So we click on energy shields. Now that takes two force field emitters. I've built uh, eight of those, as you saw when I, well, if you were paying attention when I emptied the chest. So we can install that on all of the power armour. So we install that, and then over on this side, we get to pick the field strength. Now the higher this is, obviously the more energy it's going to use. Um, too hot. If you've got it all the way at the top, so I've been told, you you're, you are pretty much invincible. But that's a little bit overkill for us. So we're going to try and get this around sort of the halfway mark. So if we go for under the S there. Oh, actually, what's it say at the top there? Armor rating three. Do you see that up here? We we'll go for armor rating three on them all. And if the armor isn't strong enough, then we can come back and adjust it up if we want to. Or if it's pretty OP, we can adjust it down and save some energy. It's really up to about uh, up to personal taste, and you can tweak tweak with it as much as you like. Uh, right, I'll go through and do the other ones quickly, and then we'll come back. So we have our energy shields and our batteries installed on everything, and they're all set to uh, where I would like them to be. Now we can go through and pick which individual upgrades we'd like for each uh, piece of the armor. Now for the helmet here, we're, I'm going to start from the head and work my way down. For the helmet, we're going to want night vision. Now, night vision allows you to see as if it was daytime if you're in a, a cave or if you're outside at night. It's bloody brilliant, but it doesn't work in on space stations or on the moon. It just makes everything black. So that's something to be aware of. So we'll have to uh, keybind it so we can turn it off easily enough. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So we'll install night vision, a hologram emitter, and a control circuit. We've got those. So we click install. Oh, another thing to mention is you can salvage... Um, items out if you decide to remove an attachment that you've got in there. Um, you don't always get everything back I believe but there is the chance that you can get the, those two pieces back that you put in which is handy. So yeah that's something to be aware of and flight control we're going to want that to make flying easier so we'll install that as well. It's uh, best used in conjunction with the jetpack. Now I'm not entirely sure what this means so bugger it, we'll just put it we'll put it there, see how that works out. Okay, so that's the helmet done in the theory. Now we we'll go for the chest plate. Now the chest plate again uh has its armour and energy put in already. Now movement, we're gonna want the parachute because I have some on me and they're cool. Basically if you fall from a height you can just hold shift and uh, your parachute will deploy and you'll lower slowly. So you'll negate damage, so we'll have that. Uh, we don't need glider. It's similar to the um, the parachute, except you can glide. You know, you can travel forwards, etc. When you when you're falling, but we are going to put in the jetpack because we love jetpacks. But the the ion thrusters there, they're pretty damned expensive, but well worth it in my opinion. So we'll have some of those as well. Now the thrust, you basically set how powerful your jetpack is. Now the weight that you've got um, for each of your items is going to add up. So the heavier you are, the more thrust you'll need. And if you're at like 20 kilos a piece, uh, the thrust is going to, even at full, is not going to be all that significant. So that's just something to be aware of. But we'll have that in, and because we're about halfway, let's try half thrust. We can always come back, if it's if it's too powerful or not powerful enough, and just tinker with it a little bit. Hence why it's called a tinker table. Another thing we're going to want to install on this is the cooling system because, uh, as I said before, the parachutes generate quite a bit of heat, so much so that you can burn to death. So the cooling system is always a good idea. So we'll be having one of those. 
So install that, and again you can adjust to the power the power of the um, cooling system itself. So this is all very good, and I think we'll put that at around half as well. Okay. I keep getting kicked by the server for idling for more than five minutes while I'm in the tinker table, which is marginally annoying. But anyway, back to it. We were doing the legs. Now in the legs, you will have uh, well these bits here. These are the main ones you'll want you'll want to be messing around with because you've already got your armor and energy sorted. So movement. You have sprint assist here. As you can see, I was uh, messing with this a second ago before I got kicked off, off the server again. Now you've got compensation, power, and walking assist. Walking assist, pretty obvious, controls how fast you walk normally. Power um, affects how fast you run. You've got figures down here. If you pay close attention, you could probably work out the mathematics of it. But I can't, so I'm not going to try. But compensation, basically, as your hunger bar goes down as you walk along, Basically, the faster you're going, the faster your hunger bar is going to wear down. It will wear down proportionally to the distance you've travelled. So it's something to be aware of. And you can adjust this to completely compensate for the uh, the speed that your hunger bar goes down. But it's just a waste of energy. So if you're going to be running miles and miles and miles, just make sure you bring plenty of food with you and you'll be fine. We'll set it there just to negate it being a little bit annoying. And you've got jump assist. Now... I don't think we'll really need that as we've got a jetpack fitted, though we might come back and add it again later, as I said with other things. Swim boost, pretty useless, I don't swim very often. Uphill step assist, now this is a cool one. Basically it allows you to just run up things that are one block high, which is always bloody handy. So we'll have one of those. It doesn't have any adjustment on that because it says, you know, it does what it says on the tin. It lets you walk up one block without having to jump. And then on to feet. Now feet, there's only two main ones here. There's jet boots, which we won't need because we've got the jetpack, and the shock absorbers. Uh, we will be wanting those because that will uh, negate the fall damage we get. So if we're flying really high or we fall into a quarry or something, we can adjust the power that these use. And this will uh, compensate for how much fall damage we would have taken. So we'll set that. And we'll go for around halfway. And if we find we're still getting too much fall damage, then... Uh, we can adjust it again. And that basically is the power armor set up. So we just quickly do our power gauntlet. Now the power gauntlet is pretty damned impressive. It has an absolute ton of useful items as you can see here. Now the things that I would like to have on it is the pickaxe because well everyone needs a pickaxe. Install. Oh it's not going to let me. Uh, I don't think I've got any iron on me. One moment I shall go grab some from oh, I'm not even wearing it and it's making me move faster that's awesome <laughs> oh I'm also taking full damage oh, is that a bug it just lets me it just lets me use them even though I'm not wearing them oh well that's cool there we are grab some iron and we'll go back over here okay so we're on the power tool now we want the pickaxe because pickaxes are awesome and we can adjust how fast it works. I think as standard it will just work as a normal pickaxe but we want it to work pretty quickly. We'll go for that. So the harvest speed 19 times. Now I'm trying to think what the harvest speed of efficiency diamond axes is or are um, around 16 I suppose. No, they've got to be better than that. I'll tell you what, we'll try and get it as close to 20 times as possible. There we go, 20 times har normal harvest speed. That's pretty damn cool. Shovel, we'll want that as well. We don't need to overclock that very much because shovels are pretty quick anyway. Shears, no. Uh, rotor tiller. Automated tilling add-on. <laughs> You'd have to be a proper farmer to have a good use for that. Lux capacitor. Now this thing is pretty cool. We can't install that either because we need glowstone. Uh, oh. Glowstone, glowstone, glowstone. Loads of glowstone. Okay, so we'll be wanting glowstone in there, and I'll show you what that does in a minute. It basically, um, you have free torches, but they're much cooler. You'll appreciate them, trust me. Uh, prototype Omni Wrench, we don't need that. Or scanner, no. Leaf blower, next to useless. Weapons, now weapons we do need. Now, melee assist, hmm. I can live without it. I cannot, however, live without the railgun because that is cool. 
<laughs> uh, railgun is, well, exactly what a railgun is. I'm sure you're all aware. Basically, you fire a projectile and you can adjust how fast and how how, how um, damaging it is. So we won't put it up high. We'll put it around there. That ought to be fantastic. Anything else? Movement. Blink driver. That could be cool. Blink drive is basically like throwing ender pearls, but it would be free. It just costs energy. Specials. Diamond drill upgrade. We definitely want that. Uh, aqua affinity. Cosmetic. Oh, I did mean to say, you've got a cosmetic, as you see there. It basically allows you to adjust the colour of your armour. I'm not that... Uh, I'm not that fussed about what colour it is to be honest with you at the moment um, and there's also uh, op uh, add-ons that make you invisible there, there are so many so many cool things that you can do with the uh, power armour that you really should put a lot of research into it before you do it um, but we need to charge it up so we'll come over to the energetic infuser and the first thing we'll do is the why not the helmet you see it drops straight over to this side there we are, it's starting to fill up. You'll see the bar goes down drastically. And it'll start to level out at about the level of the power input coming in, as I said before. We'll come back to that in a moment. Because we don't want to have to stand here and fill each piece up individually, because it would take forever. But we can. There's a hopper. We need that. Uh, I could do with some wood. Some wood. Just whip up a chest quickly. There we go. Now, it's, um, like all other thermal expansion machines, they have an input and, out and, and an output slot. So the orange is the output, although we could adjust which side it's on. We're just going to pop that there. Now, when this uh, helm when the helmet is fully charged, it will drop out into that chest. And if we pop a hopper on top... I know people have bitched at me about using these hoppers when I should be using the new vanilla ones because they're far superior. I will, don't worry, just not right now. Then we just chuck the rest of the power armour and stuff in there. And as it all fills up, it will just pop through to this side. Now I know I've not got the uh, tree farm down here anymore running, but we do still have all this biofuel to use up in the generators. So although this may take some time, um, I don't mind waiting. But I shall go get on with some other stuff while this is carrying on. Catch up with you in a moment. The power suits are taking a hell of a long time to charge, as expected, because they're set to hold quite a lot of energy, so we'll crack on and do some other stuff while we're waiting. Now, as I said before, I've also made lots of uh, stuff for applied energistics. Now, you see these, the 64k storage cells, they are unbelievably expensive, um, but if you can't afford to make 64k, in my opinion, then you shouldn't even be starting applied energistics just yet, because the smaller ones are just completely pointless, in my opinion. I did over make the advanced processors because I got my maths quite severely wrong so I've wasted a stack of diamonds though I'm sure I will uh, use these up at some point or another but as we're getting set to move to our space station I thought it would be a good time to make a start gathering these things together so we'll start with an ME chest and a 64k storage now this is pretty pretty basic um, applied energistics can be quite an in-depth mod but the chest, unless it has power, it will be absolutely useless. As you can see, the little black square on the top there, that means it's still completely useless. You can't put anything in it because you need to have a storage cell in there. So if we put that in there, you can now access the chest and it will hold whatever you put in there. Now it will hold uh, 63 stacks of different items and it can hold thousands. <laughs> I'm not sure the exact figures, but we're talking a huge amount of items can be stored inside one of these chests. Now, while I was here waiting for the, the power suits to charge, I thought I'd have just start doing a clear out. <clears throat> now, I know I could just put an import bus onto the chests themselves and just fill them all up, and let them fill themselves up, I should say. But I want to like, sort of filter out the, the crap and leave all that behind. So we'll, uh, I'll be put doing this manually, taking everything that I want to keep, and loading it into the ME chests. Oh no, you can't shift control click them. Oh well, shift click will have to do. You see it's all going into one stack there, because it holds 63 stacks of different types of items. So you, even things which don't normally stack, um, you can they will keep on stacking inside here. But obviously they will take up more space. 
but I shall go through and I shall empty all these chests into this storage cell. When this storage cell is full, I'll swap it out for another one, and then hopefully gather everything up from down here, and then we can move it up to the space station. I'll get back to you in a moment. Just a quick heads up, I did discover a fast way of putting things in. If you hold shift and double click on an item, it will put all of that uh, type of item into the chest. So this is going to speed things along quickly. Just thought I'd point that one out for you guys. Again, catch you in another moment. Okay guys, just about finished gathering all of the stuff from around uh, the chest. Well, I've gathered all of the metals and the minerals and things that I find useful. <clears throat> double click that in there. You see how much stuff this one disc is holding. It is an immense amount of stuff. See, 11,000 iron. It's unbelievably impressive, and if you look, just over quarter full. So you can see how uh, amazing these are for storing things. Again, though, the downside is that you have to power them in order to be able to access them. But you can pull your stacks in and put them put, uh, put them back in quite easily. Um, but the plus side is that all of this stuff there fits in this one little block. So not to, it's not going to be too much hassle moving things around. Plus, uh, at the other end, as I've got 14 of these so far, 14 of these 64k storages, we will have a massive amount of storage. And I do intend to keep on improving it. Um, there's also the DSUs, which we'll be able to hook up to the Applied Energistics Network. We'll sh I'll show that in another episode. But that will that we'll still keep those. Uh, we may even, if we start filling our, our storage up, start using deep storage units for things like iron and lapis and things like that. We'll leave it in there for now, just in case I need to access it. But that's how the ME chests work. And uh, I have plans for an amazing network of these up on the space station. Well, in true me fashion, I buggered up my recording again, so I missed loads. So I'll have to sort of catch you up briefly. Uh, we'll go through here. Oh, we were doing power suits, weren't we? Yeah, I think that's where we were when the last video ended. Um, in here, I've added the bio generators that we had before. So it's pretty much the same setup as, as down on the overworld. Um, but up here, we'll, we, we will be uh, upgrading it again. So we'll be putting another row of eight biogens across here, eight across the top, and eight across this side. That way, should we wish to run lots of quarries at once, or uh, lasers for the build craft laser table thing, if we want to do anything that requires a lot of power, it shouldn't be too difficult to sort that out. Um, the redstone conduit from these generators goes underneath, much the same as this one does, and it comes out on this side. Uh, it comes up into this uh, redstone energy cell there, and I've got this conduit here and that conduit there. Now I'm going to try and keep as much of the wiring and things like that hidden as possible. Uh, this gap here is going to be where we put our first lot of applied energistic stuff, and we'll have the machine set up along this way. So, uh, power suits. I don't need the table, do I? Basically, um, I put all of the stuff in the energetic infuser and it charged up nicely. I'm wearing it now, as you can see here, looking mighty spiffy in my futuristic looking spacesuit. Now the things you need to know, um, other than obviously what we've seen so far, is if you press the K key, which is the default key, you bring up this menu here. Now basically this allows you to keybind certain things like the jetpack and flight control there so you can turn them off. So if I press L, you see in the bottom left there, it says jetpack on, flight control on. So now I'm flying, which is fantastic. Excellent, so we just turn it off again. Um, I do need to bind some, I need to bind the sprint assist and whatnot to a key because it's jolly annoying. Now to add a key, click new and then press one of the buttons that you've checked previously. I'll not keep, uh, bound for anything else. In this one I'm going to go for the semicolon, so we have this little thing there. Now to bind your items to the key, it's nice and easy, just drag and drop until a line appears. You see that there? Excellent, so we'll add those to there. So now we can turn off our sprint assist and our, um, I forget what it's called now, step assist, that's it. So we can turn that off using the semicolon. You see there, bottom left, switched off both of them. Brilliant! So now we won't run around like a fool. But we'll turn it back on again just so you can see. Oh no, that was jetpack. Ignore me. There we go. Lovely. Nice and quick. Actually too quick to control in a small space like this. But who cares? Not important. But we will turn it off for now because it wastes uh, power. 
Now, I've actually done a lot of flying. Um, I've flown from my place to spawn several times, which is around uh, 2,000 metres, and that was just to test see how much uh, power they used. As you can see, they've not used very much at all, uh, if any. I think most of it's been drawn from the um, power glove, as you see there. That's got still got it's still way above half, which is amazing. I believe all of the suit, all of the pieces of the armor and everything draw from the same thing, until yeah, I think all the power comes from one thing at a time, starting with a power tool. When the gauntlet runs out, then your armor will start to run down, which is a nice mechanic. Um, yeah, excellent. Now I think we'll get on with some applied energistics. Did I leave anything out? Oh yeah, overheating. Uh, sadly, on the server, because people have been spamming the Lux capacitor things, the free lights, they've been spamming them. They're, there's a desert down there, absolutely covered in them. It's been banned for the moment because it does create quite an eyesore. So I can't really show you that anymore. But hopefully it'll get switched back on again when people have learned their lesson. But if you hold... Oh, back to the power tool. You've got to hold shift and use the scroll wheel to switch between. So my power tool now only has the uh, rail gun there, but it's also a shovel and a pick. But if you look on the right hand side over this way here you see there's two bars one's blue which is shows you how much power you've got now if i fire the rail gun you see the orange bar jumped up that is your suit's heat level now if you overheat which the rail gun does nice and quick you see i catch fire yep yeah, i've got the uh, cooling upgrade added to my suit so i shouldn't be too bad really uh, yeah, so I think we'll get on with some applied energistics now that we've covered some very basic power suits. One moment. Okay, now the main things we're going to be using are the ME controller, an ME drive. I've moved all of my stuff from uh, the overworld up here as well now, by the way. I did that off camera. We won't need the ME chest anymore. That was just for filling things up. We don't actually need the ME access terminal either because the ME crafting terminal does the exact same job. But we do need a couple of these with stuff in, so we'll just find those quickly. Uh, where are you? There's one. There's another one. No. Yes, so four of those, and then four empty ones. I only got uh, one of the ME drives at the moment. But the first thing you're going to want to use is the ME controller. Now this bad boy is what controls your whole uh, system, and it's going to need constant power. Well, the whole ME system is going to require constant power. But you can see there that it, it's uh, powered up there because it's attached to the conduit. Now if you go inside, you'll see it's currently using three or oh, six units per tick. Why did that change? I have no idea. Anyway, it's using six energy units per tick. I'm not sure what the calculation is from Minecraft Jewels to um, the energy units used by Applied Energistics, but it's not too important really. It's a small amount, until you've got a massive system anyway. Now the ME drive will pop there. Now this is essentially a chest, but you can stick all of these guys in there, just slot them all in. If we just leave one in there for now. You see it's orange there, that means it's got all of its uh, that's the one that's got all of its slots filled, yeah. You see that 63 of 63 types? It's all used up. But this one, yeah, these are empty. You see that one's green, that means it's got space. And when it goes red, it means it's full. So you've got like a visual indication there. And the other thing was the crafting terminal. Now, actually, if I show you the access terminal first, just because, there we go. ME access terminal. Essentially, it turns your uh, all well, all of your storage. You can access it all from one screen, which would be this one. So you can see on that one um, storage disk we've got in the drive, we have all of this stuff, which is pretty impressive. And you can just pull stuff straight out, or you know, half stack straight out, the same as you would do from a normal chest, and shift click them back in again. And you can also search, as you can see there. Just type something into the bar. So say we wanted a rose, there we go, rose, it'll bring it up, or anything else with RO in it, obviously. It's pretty intuitive, uh, it's much like uh, searching for things in any eye, really. But we don't need this one, because this is like the beginner's grade. Um, and I have one of these anyway, so the crafting terminal, we'll pop that one there. And now you can see you can pull things out, and then you can... Uh, make them here. 
I don't have anything there worth making really, but <laughs> not important. And if you shift click, you can just put stuff straight back into there again. So you can have full access to everything that you have in your entire system right next to this crafting table, which is bloody amazing. I mean, there is uh, automatic crafting and everything that we can cover in a later episode, but I think this will do for now. Now we'll pop all of these in, like so. Oh, there's room for more. Oh, excellent. Let's get two more then. So if I build another um, ME drive, I'll pop that one up there. And then we need how many more? We've got four. So we need six more 64Ks to fill that up. But that is an immense amount of storage. It really is. I mean, if you look at this here, there's just so much stuff. Um, granted, it's not very intuitive because you'd have to search through for each and every single different thing. But it's not the end of the world. It is a brilliant system. And when we've got some automatic crafting set up, it will be bloody fantastic. So that's the ME stuff, uh, or the Applied Energistic stuff. Is there anything else we could cover right this very second? Not really. It's just where we start doing our automating soon, which I will cover in the yeah in the next episode. We'll cover it then. Now, I'm going to reassemble the machine room, albeit temporarily, across here, um, and then plug up this hole, and then we'll be setting up some auto-crafting, and I'll reset up the uh, the quarry input that we had before, I'll get that all set back up again, but using the applied energistics to keep everything ticking over in a much, much more streamlined way than the, um, shall we say, crude? <laughs> Crude's probably the best word. The crude way we had set up before. Though I'll still be using the deep storage units because they are infinitely superior to filling up your ME system with cobble and things like that. Well, okay, guys, I think we're going to leave the episode there. Um, yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed. Sorry it's taken a while to get it uploaded. Um, I sort of lost spirit when I saw half of the things were messed up. But I'm sure um, I pretty much covered everything that you've missed out on. There might be a few more details. Uh, if there is anything else, anything you're confused about... Oh, I'm running out of oxygen. If there is anything you're confused about, feel free to leave a comment or message. And I will uh, answer the questions as soon as I possibly can. There we go. Fantastic. Right, take it easy, guys. Have fun.